Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the awesome cast of 2012. Actually, it's awesome cast number 83. First one of 2012. We have to uh, cherish our time together. We do have to cherish our time together. Uh, if you, you're, you're, yeah, this will be our last year. <laughs> So every every episode is going to be a countdown to the Mayan calendar. Yeah, pretty much. Is that much. what we're doing? Yeah. Is it, will we be establishing this now? Yeah, wait. Let me see what day that is. <laughs> I'm curious. I might be busy that day. I put in my Google calendar just to be sure. Let's see. And make sure the Reiner's up. I believe it's December 20th, 21st. It's the 21st. Like 21st. I want to know what day of the weekend it is. It's on a Friday. Oh, that's no fun. <laughs> I know, right? What's about your weekend? Yeah. Um, so anyways, hey, that's the awesome cast. I thought we, maybe we could do a show on that day. Like if it was cl- if, if it was close Special enough if go. it was close enough to to Tuesday we could actually do a show on that day mm-hmm. and just keep going until midnight and we all disappear. Then I don't have to edit it. Right. All right. <laughs> all right. A twenty four hour or bust uh, a podcast. No, it wouldn't be twenty four so, hour. Well, twenty four hour or bust. <laughs> the Shut bust up. would be whenever it ended. Um, Oh. Anyways, beyond that depressing fact, uh, so we're here, uh, a newly, uh, as you see, shaped uh, awesome cast. We're going to try to go on widescreen on all of our shows here. Uh, so a little you bit know, of You know, if you wouldn't have pointed that out, no one would have noticed. Well, not if they're on the audio cast, Chachi. Exactly. I'm Mike Sorg, and uh, with me on the couch, as usual, is Mr. Chachi of Chachi Says Dot Net. ChachiPlays.com. I, I am I'm waving to You're, all of the audio listeners. Hello, <laughs> hello audio people. <laughs> so how was your uh, how was your holidays? Uh, not bad. Yeah, yeah. you had your two weeks off from everything. 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 You, you were Santa, except for work. Except for work, and I was Santa. Except for the paying work, yes. of course. Yeah, my exactly. career, and yeah, all the side projects I was off from. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. it worked out well. Excellent. Welcome back. I'm glad you came back. Yeah, I almost didn't. I was like, <laughs> and uh, joining us, not Rob De La Creta. He had a work emergency, but thankfully filling in at the last minute, 20 minutes after the minute. But uh, Brian Snyder, how you doing? Have a tech. Hi, good. And I just want to say for the record, round is a shape, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> well, first, before we get into everything, we got a little bit of feedback. We got a little bit of uh, we got some some stories, of course. Uh, but I had uh, the fortune to interview uh, do an interview yesterday for a Kickstarter. So let's go to that right now. Hey guys, we just want to take a quick minute to talk with somebody about a great Kickstarter that's going on. Uh, g- give a shout out to them and talk a little bit about using Kickstarter. We've talked to a few people here in the past. And uh, and we always love to hear from developers, of course, uh, respective developers and, and everything like that, as we again have again in the past uh, on with me uh, on the phone right now is Tom Rockwell, known to uh, many out there on the Internet as Devo Spice. And he's got a great Kickstarter. Hey, can you tell us about it, Tom? Uh, sure. Yeah, the uh, Kickstarter is for a video game I want to develop called Rollers, which uh, I'm, I'm billing it as kind of a – it's going to play as a cross between Pac-Man and Super Mario Brothers. Um, so what you're going to do is it's, – it's, I'm going to develop it first for iPhone and then later for Android, uh, but it's going to use the accelerometer in the device. So you tilt the phone back and forth, and that will – Move the roll the let the character roll back and forth. These are little alien creatures who can roll themselves up into a ball, and the goal of the game is to guide the creature through an underground cavern that's sort of like a maze and destroy all the crystals. Um, I wrote this whole backstory for the scenery and environment and everything where these crystals are growing and they're poisoning the atmosphere and you're part of this elite team of military force who has to destroy the crystals. So you go into the cavern, you know tilt the phone back and forth, destroy all the crystals. And of course you have an environment suit with a limited amount of air. So if you have to do it before air runs out, so you're timed. So. Excellent. Excellent. Now, uh, what, uh, what made you think to go to, uh, the, the Kickstarter to, uh, to get this, uh, get this going? Um, well, I've developed video games myself in the past. Uh, my weapon of choice is director for, uh, programming. Mm-hmm. Um, I've done a couple other different technologies and stuff, and I wanted to get into iPhone development. And I looked into uh, programming with um, Objective C. I've done a little bit of work with this technology called PhoneGap. And while PhoneGap is great, it, I, I don't think it's fast enough for a game, especially one like this, where it really has to be fast and responsive. Yeah. So I looked into what it would take for me to develop the game entirely myself, like I normally do. Um, using Objective-C and everything. And I was like, yeah, that's probably going to be a two-year project. So I was like, 
let me see if I can hire some, you know, people who've done this and know what they're doing. And I got a quote from uh, a team of, of developers. And I was like, you know what, I can do this. If, if I can raise about $5,000, I can make this happen in probably about three to four months. Um, so then I was like, well, where am I going to get that kind of money? And uh, I have a couple of friends who have used Kickstarter successfully in the past. And I was like, well, let me try Kickstarter, see, see if we can uh, get it going that way. Excellent. Um, and it seems like a really good way to see if like anybody's interested in, in your idea, you know, because we always think the idea is great to ourselves, but you put it out there. Is anybody really excited about this? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a great way to test the waters. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, you know, what's the plan? You got five days left. Uh, you got a bit to go on your goal here. Uh, yeah. how, how long has this been running? Uh, it was a 30 day thing. So it's been running for almost a month now. So, you know, 25 days. Um, they were, you know, it was the type of thing where we got a whole bunch of pledges at the beginning and then it kind of trailed off and yeah. now things yeah. are starting to pick up a little bit again. So, um, I have like, you know, one last push to try to get people interested in this project and make it happen. Now, uh, what, what about, I see you got 29 backers. That's a pretty good number to get started with. Uh, you know, I guess we never, we always talk about people that have gone through Kickstarter. Uh, if, if you don't make it in the next five days, uh, what's going to be the next step? Are you going to go back to the well, try to improve, improve your plan, try to try another push at it? Or, uh, what, what is the, the plan, uh, one way or the other? There is a plan B. Uh, the plan B is that I will do it myself, although I ha I recently came across some other um, opportunity. Uh, I can't say too much because I'm non-disclosed, but um, there, there will be another way for me to program the game myself without using Objective-C uh, that should take less than the two years I, I thought it would. <laughs> That's good. That's good. So I mean, it, you know, it, it doesn't work out for everybody, but you know, you got you got a few days left. I've seen a lot of big bumps in the in the last few days of a Kickstarter. Uh, I think yeah. we had a similar situation uh, with a friend of ours, Justin Kanaki, on the Breezes, uh, where he had that last uh, you know uh, bid, and I think he had about a three thousand dollar goal. Um, but uh, but but it's it's great to see you know somebody else giving a shot at this and hearing and and, and would you be willing to come back? Let us know about the uh, the 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 status uh, later on with the project. Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Uh, other than the Kickstarter, uh, anything else you want to plug, put out there right now? Uh, well, most people know me as Devo Spice. I do comedy rap songs. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a new song about Doctor Who out right now called I Am the Doctor, which is available at thefump.com, T-H-E-F-U-M-P.com. Excellent. Excellent. I know we do have a few Doctor Who fans out there. Look at you, Bobby from Johnstown. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> we'll throw, you're sure to get a few hits off of that right there. So that's cool. at thefump.com. Thank you very much, Tom, for joining us. And, Thanks for having uh, me. And good luck with the Kickstarter. We're going to be putting it out to everybody uh, that we can uh, in the last few days here to help you out here with Sorgatron Media. All right? Great. Thanks. All right. Thanks a lot. And just as an update, uh, here on Tuesday night, we got 30 backers with, for him, four days to go. So please check that out. And of course, I know most of you guys are going to see this on Wednesday. So uh, if you're down with it and want to help support this guy, get his iPhone app out there. Thanks, uh, uh, Diva Spice, for uh, joining us there. And hey, thanks, Nero, for giving us a head up, heads up on that. Matt Weller, who comments frequently on the Twitters and the Google Plus. Um, he usually gives us a pretty good follow-up. Uh, did, we, did we talk about his blog? No, we didn't, because that was after our last show. Did you heard about this, right, Chach? I heard about what? Sir? The Neckbeards blog. No, he uh. um he he put it. Well, I think Rob dropped the the Neckbeards comment, and uh, apparently apparently some people need to go to Google things that we talk about sometimes. Uh, I think Miss Bossy No Pants mentioned she has that problem sometimes too. Um, but uh, but yeah. Yeah. There's a Neckbeards blog. There's a Neck. Well, there's a, <laughs> it was an entire blog. He had a post about it. <laughs> so, um, so, 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 go check that out. Um, I don't want to. No, no. Kind of afraid of what will be there when I go to look at it. It's uh, okay. Knows. Anyways, uh, we had some we had some feedback. No, we didn't. We did have some feedback. People don't watch this. No, they don't. Obviously, uh, but like I said, Miss Bossy po No Pants, who I met the other day, Chachi. She was at the uh, brunch after the uh, the jumping in the river thing that you just met her. Out. Yeah, I just met her. Do you live in a cave? What? The, what? What? Did I, did I miss something? Oh, I, I think this, I think it's the first time I met her. Okay. Am I the only one that hasn't met her? Probably. Maybe. I don't believe I've met her. Maybe not. There you go. Okay. There you go. So, um, but uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, what I was just mentioning, uh, every time I watch the awesome cast, I have to Google like ninety nine things, but a bitch ain't one. Nice. No, you have to edit that out. Uh, yeah, you know. Um, but we did get an email bleep, from Sonic Screwdriver, who's been a, uh, a a long contributor to both this and the Wrestling Mayhem show. Who? Uh, 
sonic screwdriver oh then i know we i didn't call him the other thing that we call him on the other no i didn't hear what you said oh well i stopped listening salutations and well wishes to the awesome cast cast i'm uh, still learning about the twitter thing but i've been reading a lot about godaddy.com reaping what they sowed by backing the stop online privacy uh, piracy act uh what's your take on the bill's chances especially now that the internets have uh started started willing away uh at their supporters i think the bill is well intentioned but you have to have someone working on it that has the knowledge and ability to see outside of the box and its effects it's like knowing what's behind your target before you shoot something congress doesn't exactly have a great track record of um yeah and of course it, it, there's a lot more going on with this uh while the time we're off GoDaddy apparently came out publicly in support of sopa and then again sopa <laughs> Uh, pulling their support after everybody um, uh, started pulling their domains, whatever left over, what there was. Uh, I guess there's a pretty big exodus of this. Uh, Brian, are you? Uh, have you been following the SOPA thing at all? A little bit. Um, I'm definitely not an expert on it, but I think in the case of GoDaddy, they, I don't know, they kind of got what was coming to them, to be quite frank. Um, you know, I, I think it's one of those things that, you know, they supported something. And in fact, I believe they helped write it, which is actually... Um, chapped a lot of people behind a lot more than just actually supporting it. Um, and then only after people started moving their domains did they actually say, oh, well, you know, we don't really support it, which is fine, except for you already helped craft the legislation, so all your input is in there. Um, I, I think it's one of those things that, under normal circumstances, probably not the worst thing in the world, but it's all of those... Um, other situations. It's, you know, how can, you know, what are the loopholes? What, what else can it be used for? I think those are uh, more of the concerns that people have. You know, the legislation itself probably isn't the worst thing in the world, but what it can be used for, for other purposes, uh, you know, such as, you know, bringing down legitimate sites, those sort of things, I think that's where people have a problem. If you're going to manipulate DNS, you better understand how it works. Is um, it if it, is, isn't that um didn't we see a little bit so a little bit of this already with the uh what ice has been doing to some of these domains to stop piracy because yep. they they were they were blocking off the domains and you know throwing off their big ice you know <laughs> like uh what what tv duck and all those were taken down i think uh, but at least ones like that that were just linking yep. to tv shows um some of them are starting to come back though some are coming back but the, all you have to do is register another domain i think and um, and some of them, there's been instances where they've gone and done this, and it's taken down legitimate sites. There's actually a, a, a case where there was a site that happened to be on the same server, legitimate site, not connected whatsoever with the with the with the uh, violators, and it took them a year to get any recourse out of anything. A year that kills their business. Well, yeah, especially if you have you know any type of charitable event or you know something you know such as that, obviously. You know, if your your site gets taken down, you have no recourse. I think in the same instance you were speaking of, you know, I think it was almost a year. Some you know somebody's site went down, and they didn't have any information as to why it was happening, what was being mm-hmm. done, and then all of a sudden they just released the DNS record or you know allowed it to come back online. But that a year has already passed, and if that person was running a business, too late. You know, they they they've had to move on. You know, by that point, and I mean, let's be frank. Uh, people who were putting up malicious sites, they probably within five minutes had another site or an IP or you know whatever it is already up and working by the time it got shut down. Even even as a matter of course, even if uh, they use SOPA to do what they intend to do, as long as you know the IP address that was supposed to go to, you know, you just do a quick yep. who is who is find out what that IP address is and you know how to get to your site still. So it doesn't even kill that, but it still make wreaks havoc on the rest of just general day to day internet usage if they start applying this thing so uh but i mean as far as godaddy's uh flip-floppiness on it yeah that's uh, godaddy's been kind of in the bad you know side of you know general tech people to begin with and it seemed like the last last straw for a lot of, i know rob was sweet that he was pulling all of his domains going to over to i think hover um and uh me i i just have too many up there I can't, I can't go and drop seven bucks, eight bucks a piece on them and get all these domains moved over there. Uh, the big, the big, uh, 
um, guy that was kind of uh, waving the flag of this was the guy with the cheeseburger network. You know, the law cats and all that other yeah. stuff. I think work fail blogs is a part of that too, that I read. Um, I could be mistaken, but, um, but yeah, it, he, he was going to pull his thousand plus domains off of GoDaddy. And, uh, you know, as it is, I think I want to start, I think I want to start not giving GoDaddy any more money. I already moved at least one server off of there. Uh, I, I, I think as domains start coming up, I'm going to start moving them over, uh, from here on. Cause I, while I don't have a problem with their service, this is kind of like, it, it is kind of last straw if they, if they, you know, did something inane as this, you know? So listen, I have one domain. You have one on, domain? On GoDaddy. <laughs> <laughs> me and, and you moving, had a problem with the one you had before. Me moving is not going to make a difference in their Actually, business. Actually, don't I have that domain now? No. No, you you, you have one of mine. I have one of yours. I have the other one. Okay. And it's on GoDaddy. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, me moving that isn't going to make a difference in their year of sales. So Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, but, but but for somebody like me, I have, like, I don't know what I had last check. I might have, like, 40 domains. That's a pretty good chunk, at least, out of my pocket, at least. So, I mean, and... and, and it they, cost me eight bucks. It cost you eight bucks. <laughs> for the it's year. It's going to be more. It's going to be, like, 12 next time you renew. That's fine. Well, it's going to be like that anywhere, though. Right. So... Um, so it's going to cost me twelve bucks. Yeah, and, and, and while I've, you know, and I've always been kind of for GoDaddy, you know, of whatever about their advertising. I know their site is a mess, and I know what they're trying to do, trying to upsell everything that you don't understand half the time. Um, one podcast was like, you know, this is a company that that uh, pretty much banks on you being drunk and hitting the wrong button and buying more than you intended. Um, but they've had the best service out of anybody I've had, and I've had some pretty cruddy services in the past. So I'm really skeptical to move my stuff over to anybody else because i don't want to go to into the unknown but at this point i think i'm ready to start shopping around i've been really happy with surpass hosting so and i know they're real responsive at least on the twitter so that's it's, it's it's pretty nice so I'll, I'll recommend those guys sponsor us surpass hey um but other than that i mean is there anything we else like cookies we like cookies <laughs> send us some cookies surpass hosting you and a check that? Cookies and a check. Cookies and a check. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Cookies and a check. Oh boy, that's our new uh, uh, advertising initiative. You, yes. If you notice, I pulled all of the advertisers from. I didn't notice. You didn't notice. <laughs> I think I pulled them from your site still. <laughs> I didn't notice. I might have a couple of stragglers out there. Well, we were supposed to start something today, so I didn't actually go to the sites. Mm-hmm. I was on the back end of the sites getting stuff ready, mm. and once that didn't happen, then I just saved everything and walked away. Do you want to mention what you were working no. on? No. Because it'll be up tomorrow no. by the time this comes up. Are you sure it'll be up tomorrow? Sure. You don't know that. Sure, I'll probably work on don't it tonight. Don't know that. <laughs> don't know that. Just just keep an eye on Chachi. Well, we'll, we'll then I'll just bring it. up this title here that happens to have it anyway. We'll talk about it later. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, aside from that, anything else you want to add there, Brian? About Someone uh, didn't have time to do my hey, stuff Hey, hey, hey. About SOPA? <laughs> nah, not really. I think... Uh, I think this is, you know, that and the protect IP or whatever the the other version is. I think it's just a, really a call for people, you know, who understand technology to really get involved in the political process because this kind of stuff is going on all the time. And it's only when it's too late that people can't get to different things or can't do something do they get mad. And by the time they get mad, it's already too late. So... Um, it, it's good for people to kind of keep up to date on this kind of stuff. And, uh, we're lucky this time that, you know, we had a list of you know, companies that supported it and, and if you don't want to, you don't have to support them. So it exactly. turned out, you know, pretty good. Exactly. Uh, uh, uh Miss Boss- Bossy Pants in the chat actually mentioned Chachi. Well, if, uh, a thousand people each have one domain and they all move their domain, right, it'd make was, a difference. I was going to bring that up. Okay. And in, in the case of GoDaddy, no. No, it wouldn't. no, no, because even eight thousand dollars missing from their profits for the year mm. isn't going to. But gonna, still, it's, yeah, you're at least making a vote with your with your pocketbook. You know, I mean, no, I'll, I'll voice my opinion exactly. and make a vote. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm just lazy. <laughs> You're the lazy protester. Yeah, I'm just lazy. <laughs> I don't, so it all boils down to a chat. I, I just renewed the domain. I'm mm-hmm. just lazy. <laughs> Literally lazy. That's all there is to well, it. You want to renew your domains? Uh, you know, it, it might be good to get an extra year because uh, those rates go up. I think in February. So if you do the uh, 
service switch and get your extra no, gear. No, because if I go on there again, then I am just going to move it. <laughs> <laughs> and one year time a year, I log in. I mean, it's yeah, to do something. Right, right. And then it's going to be the move. Right. So, I mean, the next time I log in, it's going to be to move it. So, I mean, I, I, I renewed it like three months ago. I don't want to log back into the horrible site. <laughs> and they do find, move everything. find my way They're around. worse than Facebook. It's just bad. It just, they just move everything. It's horrible. <sighs> um, and it has been getting worse, I swear. Um, but, yeah. So, uh, what else we got here? Um, I was actually looking up some stories. Uh, we, you know, speaking of SOPA and all the issues there, uh, hackers are planning a homespun anti censorship satellite internet. Wait, what? One more time. Hackers are planning a homespun anti censorship satellite internet. There you go, Chachi. You can, you can read it yourself. Planning homespun anti-censorship <laughs> satellite internet. That's what it says. That's what it says, oh, exactly. Wow. Uh, according to this article up here on Engadget. Say it again. I don't want to say it again. <laughs> <laughs> so, say, uh, uh, Berlin's Chaos Communication Congress are cooking up a plan to launch a series of homemade satellites as a backbone of an uncensorable internet in space. In space! <sighs> no? This idea hurts my head. Well, it's low. How are they going to launch the satellites? Well, I think the satellites are already up there. You said the communication satellites. Well, their name is Chaos Communications Congress. Maybe it's like Dr. Evil's Chaos. Con <laughs> I don't know. This isn't going to work. <laughs> you don't think it's going to work? No. Why wouldn't it work? I mean, all it is is, is, uh, is all the Internet is is a bunch of networks tied together. You know, in some fashion. No, some it's bubble. not. Is it, the it's internet a series is, of tubes. <laughs> it's a series of tubes. <laughs> tubes. 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 You can't get tubes up into a satellite. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Defeats the wireless purpose. I'm glad we have you here as such an educated mind on this. What do you think of this uh, this concept here, Brian? I think this is one heck of a Kickstarter project. I'll give you that. <laughs> I, they could get my money. I mean, well, I'd give some money towards the rocket, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> just to support a rocket. I mean, if you, you know, maybe if you get a hundred dollars, you get better bandwidth. I mean, I don't know how this would work. Well, well, according to this, um, it it uh, it wouldn't work. Well, okay, like oh, it, there's there's a few hur hurdles. It would for be this. the most objects in lower Earth orbit uh, circle the Earth every ninety minutes. Uh, useless for a broadband satellite that needs to remain geostationary. Throwing some big words out there, Chachi. Follow along. No, I got Instead, you. a terrestrial network of base stations will have to be installed in order to remain in constant contact as it spins past at the cost of $130 per unit. $130? Per unit. For all these base stations? I don't yes. know. Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, they also say the desire uh, to get an amateur astronaut onto the moon within 23 years. <laughs> This and you wonder, better. and you wonder why I questioned that idea I to begin that, I, with. I like this idea. I'm, I'm no, like if you give guys. the most money in the Kickstarter project, you, you get, get to be the, the amateur astronaut. Yes, or at least your kid, because this is twenty-three <laughs> years in the future. So um, I want to be an wow. astronaut. Wow! I think Here's five thousand dollars. You win. <laughs> now, now get into the really? ship. Really? I think it just take five thousand dollars. I mean, how get into the ship that's duct taped and uh, stapled together. <laughs> And they didn't say they'd be successful. Tie that rope in a knot. They said they'd try. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that means you're the monkey. I know. Uh, <laughs> that, means, that means you're the monkey. This is something I'll probably... Uh, uh, you're the spider monkey. This will probably be... You'll uh, get sent up in the cardboard box <laughs> with, with the, uh, the uh, bottle rockets attached to it. <laughs> This is probably good news for both of you guys, as I know you guys have to support probably a lot of this crap out there. IE6 usage drops below 1% in U.S. Yay! Microsoft celebrates Great. with cake and t-shirts. Really? Yeah, there they are. So, so, <laughs> There's a cup, too. So instead of creating a reliable browser, <laughs> they're spending their money on cakes, cups, and t-shirts. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Out of all, of thumbs up, Microsoft. <laughs> thumbs up. What's so Do you guys? I mean, seriously. Do you guys see a lot of like? How the hell do you have IE six on your computer stuff? No. Or you 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 have them all all taken care of, don't you? Yeah. You like you squashed out the IE six bug. We did. What are you up to? Eight. You already right? yes. across the board. You guys are eight. Eight. Well, fantastic. I know. Well, what about you, Brian? I stepped uh, on every one of them. 
you would be surprised to know that there are many large corporations in the Pittsburgh area that still use IE6. Not to name uh, any names. No, no, absolutely not. But, uh, you know, they have custom applications. They have, you know, yeah. custom websites. I mean, it, it is pretty prevalent and even to the point that, um, you know, I know people use other technologies such as Citrix to, you know, to put IE6 and it's just, it's, it's some crazy stuff. And, it's just really it, it comes down to resources and money and you know if you're not a you know company that tends to keep up with stuff you're going to get left behind and you know stuck in these particular situations mm -hmm. um, but you have to have leaders and management and really to to really you know push that stuff forward otherwise although we laugh at it it is easy to fall behind and when you have 20,000 users all stuck on it. It's not really that funny. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, no, he's not wrong. No, no. But Miss Bossy Pants in the chat room says uh, her company, a national retailer, uses IE6 and Citrix. It's a joke. Um, yeah. But it also a question that's raised here in the article here on uh, The Verge. As, uh, it's not clear if people are jumping ship to IE8, 9, or, or anybody else. But considering the numbers we're seeing in Firefox and Chrome lately. It took us nine months. took you nine months? To and that, get rid is of that, IE6. That, were you jumping just to other IEs, or were you jumping no. anything else? Is, you're still IE-based. Uh, all of our softwares won't work with other browsers. Yeah. Um, There's some, some people who have special permission uh -huh. to use other browsers such as Firefox or Chrome, mm -hmm. but that's because they design our website. Okay. So they want to make sure that all the graphics and everything works. For everybody right. outside. Yeah. Hey, that's, that makes sense. That makes sense. So, I mean, while we acknowledge the fact that there are other browsers there, mm -hmm. uh, our, our custom softwares just won't work with mm -hmm. those browsers. Well, I mean, I remember uh, in the company I worked for, we had a, a, a Windows server, and, and half the stuff wouldn't work. And we were on Macs. We were developing video on Macs, so we didn't have much choice. Right. And uh, you know, we were like, well, Firefox kind of don't works. Chrome works a little bit less, but you know, uh, but it got the job done, sort of, but we couldn't do any special features with it for, for planning and anything like that, which really killed us because we probably needed the most planning out of anybody there. Uh, but <laughs> what about you, you Brian? Are you guys IE only over there? Uh, for our primary application, yes, uh, every you know IE only. I think you know we support seven and eight. Although I think we just recently went to eight. But um, you know, even when you talk, uh, you know, just custom applications. You know, I'll be honest, not a lot of the uh, Microsoft products in, in and of themselves work really well with other browsers. So uh, there's a lot of large SharePoint organizations and uh, you know different situations that you know you, you pretty much have to use an IE browser and um, and when you do, when you use it for work, you, I'll be honest, a lot of people tend to use it at home as well. So it, mm -hmm. it, that's why sometimes it's really hard to uh, grab traction for some of the home users because, well, when they go to work, they have IE. When they come home, they want this, a similar experience so for, you, for a normal user. That's when you see these scourges, these artistic scourges outside the box developing on their own <laughs> laptops or, or, or the guys with the iPads that Chachi has to deal with uh, at his work. But, uh, you know, um, actually, that's gotten easier. Has that gotten easier? Yeah. Now, you guys, you guys, well, you were talking we about updated. before you guys have been doing a little more to that. Didn't, didn't we updated. Cit doesn't Citrix or something now support that? Yeah. So I, it's good that that's being recognized to make it easier on you guys. So, but, and, you know, and there's been a lot, there was listening to a lot of the year end shows and they're talking about the good and bad of Microsoft and say, well, Microsoft is not making it a lot of headway on the phone side. Uh, the home PC side, uh, well, well, I mean, what's what's the verdict on the home PC side? I mean, people are still buying them just because it's there, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, but people aren't terribly excited about Windows 7, nor Windows 8, I don't think. People don't like change. That's true, too. That's true, too. I mean, I'm, I mean, all these are running XP, but that's just because these are older machines right. for me. Um, and people will run those machines into the ground. Um, but they got, you know, like like Brian's talking about with the, these guys, you know, they got the uh, enterprise going on. Uh, so they're they're going to be fine for years, even if they don't do anything innovative and get anything out there. You know, you know, barring you know, if they didn't have Xbox or anything like that. Microsoft is fine. Microsoft is not going away anytime no. soon. So they're 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 the they're the IBM at this point. Right, they're not right? going anywhere. So, cause I don't see Apple doing any enterprise solution anytime soon. <laughs> so, all right, what else we got here? Um, have you guys uh, caught on to what's going on on Penny Arcade lately? Yes. 
I did. You did. Now, now do you want to? Do you want to no. kind of fill us in on it? No. Well, I, there's a the company that was, if I understand correctly, was marketing a add-on for PS3 and Xbox 360 controllers. Um, and the way that the add-on worked is it would slip over the controller, and instead of there being buttons, there would be knobs on the back of the controller. Mm-hmm. So uh, the way they pushed it is it was really good for people who were handicapped mm-hmm. and couldn't hold the controllers, but it also allowed for faster shooting and everything. Okay. See, well, in this whole thing, I never caught wind of what the controller okay. was. <laughs> so Ocean Marketing is the company pushing that. Mm-hmm. And apparently the controller was supposed to be out and available before Christmas. Mm-hmm. Uh, the week before Christmas, the controller was supposed to be... There were pre-orders be, through the website. Yeah, were supposed to be released. That didn't happen because of a shipping issue, so it got pushed back. Uh, that's where this trouble begins. Mm-hmm. Because Ocean Marketing mishandled the entire thing. Uh, instead of making an announcement saying that, hey, uh, there was an issue... This has been pushed back. We apologize. Here, have five bucks back or whatnot. Free shipping on us. Hooray. Um, Someone emailed and complained and said, I was really hoping to have this by Christmas because it was supposed to be a gift. And the initial emails were like, hey, you know, I kind of see your problem with this. Can you know what's going on? I just would like some more information. Well, I mean, and on top of that, after the, the kid had emailed, they had started doing a discount on the pre-orders because of the pushback. Yeah. Yeah. Now I forget the guy's name because honestly I didn't care that much, but the guy from ocean marketing sent back a, a a smart aleck remark and it Mm -hmm. was an email full of, yeah, screw you. Who cares kid? Mm -hmm. And they went back and forth a few times and each email just started escalating the the problem. It really turned childish really quick. Yeah. And so the kid emailed the whole thing to Penny Arcade. <laughs> and, and that's the if you don't want to send there's a, If there's, by chance, uh, if you don't know who Penny Arcade is, that's fine. You might have heard the name before, mm-hmm. but you still heard the name before. But they're huge. So if Penny Arcade posts something about video games... Or a video game related company. I mean, look at all the crazy stuff that happened with Jack Thompson. Right on their website. Yeah, you're screwed. Mm-hmm. Well, not only did all right, the guy, the guy from Penny Arcade, uh, started off civil. He emailed the guy. He's like, "Here, this is what's going on. You kind of mishandled this thing. Uh, could you throw the guy an apology?" Mm-hmm. And the guy from Ocean Marketing got even childish. Even more childish, and he started pulling names out of his uh, of his hat of people that he quote unquote knew, and so <laughs> from there, um, the Penny Arcade guy said, "Yeah, well, there goes your table at PAX," <laughs> and that's where the guy made an even bigger mistake, saying, "I can get into PAX if I want to get into PAX." Like I know the guy that runs PAX. <laughs> He's like I'm the guy that runs PAX. Yeah, and so yeah, Penny Arcade's like, yeah, I'm the guy that runs. For PAX. those that don't know, PAX is Penny Arcade Expo. Yeah, and he's like, yeah, I'm the guy that runs PAX. So unless you want to buy a ticket to come in and browse, you're not getting a table. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, uh, Penny Arcade posted the guy's name, address, phone number, email address, and Twitter account. Which let me just point out that it's a marketing company. Mm-hmm. So they're it's good not the product's company. This no. is the people representing the right. product. And so, first off, as a marketing company, there are a few things that you should be good at. Spelling <laughs> is one of those things. Um, Ocean Marketing, the original Twitter account, was misspelled. Okay. And then... Are you talking about the Twitter name? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the Twitter name was misspelled. And then, once all this hit the fan and the guy started getting hate messages and spam and blasted on Twitter, they changed their name to Ocean Strategy, once again misspelled. But apparently it got to the point where random people were emailing this guy uh, death threats, uh, going to his wife's Facebook account, and trying to get in touch with him through that. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so, I mean, uh, it's to the point where some of the big names that he name dropped, mm-hmm. came out and emailed him and said, 
we don't like you. We've never <laughs> liked you. And the one experience, like, uh, for example, it was the guy from IGN. Mm -hmm. uh, the editor-in-chief from IGN was one of the guys he name-dropped. And he said, um, first off, don't ever use my name again. He's like, the one experience we had with you was horrible and you acted like a child. And so, I mean, this guy... This company wow. is done. Wow. This is the biggest thing I've seen since, uh, uh, remember when, what was it, Duke Nukem Forever wow. came out and the PR guys said, we're saying we're never going to send, like they're on Twitter saying we're never going to send you another copy of games that we're supporting again. Right. And now they got dropped by Duke Nukem Forever's publisher about a week later. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, this is something that <laughs> got picked up. Uh, Gabe, Gabe on uh, Penny Arcade uh, was posting the, the apology letter as an update and they was talking about how the lawyers are involved. Uh, to a certain point here. Uh, he says, I think there's a big difference between being sorry and being sorry you got caught. I have a real problem with bullies. And that's that's really what this that, was. Yeah, no, that's I, exactly I mean, what it was. was. Yeah, you, you, you're a marketing person that got labeled as a boy. That's that's horrible. Yep. So I hope that guy enjoys his new career path. <laughs> Because it will not be in marketing. No, no, definitely not. Definitely not. This even is... even if he leaves Ocean Marketing off of his resume, mm -hmm. they're going to see the name, and if they Google the name, he is effed in the A. Because this guy, I mean, much like much like the guys um, with whatever the PR firm was that dealt with Duke Nukem Forever, uh, they got axed. They got, that that nobody's ever going to want to deal with that marketing firm because like you got you let one guy get on Twitter representing your firm to do this. Yep, they're done. What client's going to stick around after that? And I, I don't care. Of, I don't care if I'm the one that you were representing when you got when you screwed that up. I don't want you dealing with any of my stuff at this point. Right, and I kind of feel bad for the company that made that controller add-on mm -hmm. because I mean it really is a cool thing, mm -hmm. and I, I just. I feel bad because I it probably hurt their sales a lot. So I mean, what happens when you search uh, ocean marketing at this point? Um, well, the very first thing is a news uh, a news article that says the ocean marketing debacle finally concluded. Yes. Uh, and then their website. Oh yes. wait, no, no, no. And then uh, uh, ocean marketing's founder uh, goes viral, very bad PR, and then their website. Yeah. So I mean, we have two negative hits, and then your website. Right. But, and if you go to our website, I know Splash really big over there is uh, social social marketing, I believe, if it comes up here. Yeah, look, social media. They're experts in it. <laughs> they're really good at social media, guys. No, Obviously. Because <laughs> they're so good at email. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, so, yeah. SEO. SEO. <laughs> it's oh. a funny thing. What do you think about all this all this craziness, Brian? Well, I think it's a, it's a growing trend, and just you're going to see this more and more. Uh, you know, companies from, you know, not not to knock interns or anything, but they you know they hire people <laughs> off the street to hey manage this Twitter account or do this marketing thing and um, you know nowadays with you know especially Twitter Facebook I mean customers are a lot more interactive with whether it's with a marketing firm or the direct you know uh, company itself and it, it takes one bad day to mm -hmm. you know really just send a bad email or a bad tweet or you know something to that effect and. Um, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people that kind of get into this situation, you know, don't recognize the hole and continue to dig themselves in the hole. So, uh, you know, in a time and age where, you know, anybody with a website or a single computer can start a company and create great, great things, uh, they may not be great at marketing or they may not be great at, you know, the PR stuff and, um, you know, maybe not even know who to hire to, to do it for them. And that's really all it takes is something like this uh you know even if you look at the um uh what was the the software they put on the phones uh, i forget the company's name oh, carry iq yeah um you know again some of that has to do with communication but i mean if you if you read the blog post if you read a lot of the things that you know the founder and the company in of itself said um you know, I think you might have a little bit different of an opinion. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's just unfortunate that guy's company got caught up in all of this and he signed enterprise, you know, he signed agreements with large carriers and things weren't handled well. And uh, a lot of times, especially with contracts and different things, you, you know, you can't say something bad or, you know, it just, it, it, it gets real messy. So uh, it, it's tough. I think you're going to see a lot more of this. I think, you know, people have to understand you know, I'll be quite honest. Engineers aren't the best people to talk to customers. I understand that. I am not the best person to do that sometimes. So, um, but 
you know, like I said, I think, you know, it's going to be more prevalent. And it's going to be fun every time it happens, probably. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, we've had a few PR meltdowns in the, this past year. Not to go into a review show mode, but uh, but HP was another one. Uh, yeah. We are getting rid of o- WebOS. Wait, we're kind of not. Wait, we're uh, uh, going to sell off our consumer PC division. Wait, maybe we're not. You know, I mean, that's, you know, that's a huge company to be making a, a, a big yeah. mistake like that. You know, and now you're like, what the hell is HP, do- HP doing these days? You know, so... There's that. Sitting uh, on the fence. Sitting on the fence. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then there's Trying Go- to decide which way to go. Then there's Google. What did Google do? Uh, Google, Google, well, this is a little more probably just after we, we posted, but Google Plus has been doing more updates and everything. Um, so maybe it's the... What's Google Plus? Yeah, okay, that was kind of my question. Uh, what's, <laughs> what's, how are people doing with it these days? Well, but there's commercials to tell you exactly what it is, Josh. Have you not been seeing these on the television? I have. Yes, But and you know what? The Muppet one was awesome. I know. <laughs> and you know what I knew, what I remembered about the Muppet one? What's that? Is it had the Muppets. Yeah. It took me five times to see in the commercial before I realized that it was a Google Plus commercial uh, because I was too stuck on the fact that there was Muppets in the commercial. I'll tell you you know what that is? What's that? That is bad advertising. I don't know about that. Cut your, you caught wind of it. Wow. Cut. If it took me five times to see the commercial before I realized what the what product they were selling, mm-hmm. that's a bad commercial. And if you ask me tomorrow if I saw the Muppet commercial... I'm going to say, yeah, I saw the Muppet commercial. Did you know it was Google? No. No? No, I wasn't paying attention to what product was being sold. I was paying attention to the fact that there are Muppets. What about these other ones that are out there? We're we're seeing a lot of the Hangout commercials. We're seeing, I know I just saw one for the Nexus where it talked about circling on your phone. You know? Are you seeing a lot of the integration on your Android device? Yeah, it's being shoved down my throat. (laughs) Anytime you send me something on Google Plus, I know about it. Oh, the it moment, pops up the moment it happens. Really? Yeah. Huh. I try my hardest to ignore it because mm-hmm. I don't want to circle. You don't want to circle. <laughs> You're anti-circle. Circle gets the square. <laughs> what are you, Brad? Are you using Google Plus, Brad? Uh, no, actually, and it's one of those things I keep saying more and more. Uh, you know, I do look at other people's Google Plus pages, but you know, my, the challenge for me is is. I'm just kind of lazy when it comes to that kind of stuff because it's just rebuilding, you know, everything that I have, for example, in Twitter. And it's just like, all right, well, I already know all of these people in one platform. Um, you know, uh, the thought of doing, you know, doing some of this again is just like, eh, I'll get to it later, uh, <laughs> which is the same thing for Facebook. And well, I have other issues with Facebook, but um, yeah, it, it's, it's the same thing. It's just, it's like having to redo all of that, uh, you know, at the same time, it's just, really the barrier to entry there. I I think there's going to be a place for it. That's Chachi. There you go. I think there's going to be a place for it. I know we've been having a lot of fun again with the Google Hangouts with a lot of the other tools. They're adding new features. Now we have pages, so we'll see what develops with those. If they start being able to uh, add a different level of interactivity than like a Facebook page does, I'm going to be all for these Google Plus pages. They're on a really slow start. I could finally put managers on it that are not just me. But um, other than that, uh, but the idea of doing the Hangouts and everything will be really nice uh, 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 to get people into it. We actually have had a few different faces pop in the last couple of days. Not for very long, but there have been some different faces <laughs> popping in. Oh, no, <laughs> so. I mean, I, I don't doubt the, the legitimacy of the Google Hangout. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it works I think it's well. Their, I really think it's their best feature. Right. It works well. I mean, you guys called me during a pay-per-view. Oh, we can do phones now. Yeah. I forgot about that. And we're going to call you on Monday nights now. No, you're not. <laughs> I won't answer. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you guys can call me to join your hangout. Yeah, that was, that was and cool. I don't have to bring up the room or anything. That was cool. And that worked out well because I mean, I didn't want to watch what you guys were doing in the hangout anyhow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, but it, it, it really has kind of changed the way we, we, we do this. We, we watch raw because, you know, before we be there tweeting at each other and I mean, that's fun. But this seems like it's on a whole different level, and it's right. We're not we're not clogging up people's Twitter stream with wrestling that they don't care about. Exactly, and I know I know. uh, Whenever I post the show over there, uh, Nero's been over there uh, posting a lot of kind of follow up his thoughts on stuff, Mm -hmm. uh, and and really long write ups on the follow. So there's no limit. Like there's it's one thing to get a tweet say, "Hey, uh, thought this was really cool," or "What about this?" You know, you know, you only get so much 140 characters, but over there on Google Plus, people are are, are are allowed to kind of 
you know, broaden on their thoughts a bit more uh, than we have on Twitter. And I think I don't think Facebook encourages it as well as as this kind of platform. But I also think it's the kind of people on us. Now, there are problems with Google Plus that we're finding. Um, maybe it's because of the content that we are with the Wrestling Mayhem show. But we are definitely getting weirdos. <laughs> You're on the <laughs> Internet. Yes, but we are getting... No, no, there's no yes but. We are getting naked weirdos. You're on uh, the uh, internet. That's the problem. <laughs> You're on the internet. What if, what if, okay, let me put it this way. When's the last time you were on Facebook and there somebody, like, you know, sent you a penis picture out of nowhere? Can't say that's happened. There you go. Well, that's just happened to me on Google Hangout. And there's a problem. And I, there was that, and there was some weird kid that was, like, in his underwear and had a ninja mask and was doing weird shit and where he just blocked his ass. But if we, we couldn't make a, get him out of the Hangout. He said, well, what do I do? I'm, I, I'm looking for a report function on this it's guy. It's too public is so what it is. It, it's it. it. Now it's too open. And I know they are doing a lot to, to kind of battle the spammers. <laughs> Uh, supposedly, if a spam comes up in comments, it'll be uh, grayed out because they've identified it as spam. Ooh. So there, there's a little something going on there. You can't minus one it. I can't. No, you can't minus one it. <laughs> I wish you could. <laughs> there needs to be a negative one. Yeah. It's like there needs to be an unlike, you know, because you don't want to pl- you don't want to like the 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 comment that somebody's mother has died because that's just the wrong way, you know. But you don't want to say a comment, but you just want to acknowledge, you know. And a like just doesn't work. Um, yeah, I think that's going to grow. I think, you know, especially with Google uh, Plus, I, I think it's definitely going to grow. Uh, you know, how many years ago was it, like, when I first got Gmail, I thought was it was the most horrific thing I'd ever seen because I had email and I needed my folders. Like, I couldn't, you know, I organized everything in the folders. And, you know, over time, I got used to the labels. I got used to, you know, just being able to search it. Like, there's just so many things that, you know, Sometimes it just it's okay to you know go slow with some of this technology to figure it out, mm-hmm. um, and then once I think one of the positive things that or advantages that they may have, especially with Google Plus, is that um, you know they're trying to tie it to I guess re- I don't want to say real people, but you know there, there could be consequences for you know potentially blocking someone if um, you know if you have a chat roulette type experience with them. Uh, you know, if you, if you block that, then, you know, they could actually go away from the system, which in this particular case, uh, if, if they're, you know, Google, they, you know, that, that can be kind of big, but not mm-hmm. that they can't grow and create another big account, but it's a little bit more difficult. So I think that there's a little bit more um, chance or opportunity to, you know, keep that stuff under wraps. Mm-hmm. And they're going to get their growing pains. And I know we've seen, you know, uh, uh, Facebook has been going through their growing pains uh, with privacy, and Google had their initial blunder with uh, uh, Buzz and Wave, uh, you know, to certain aspects. So I, I think they have a little more going on there, especially I think they finally have people that are thinking more than just like engineers with a lot of this stuff, too. So, um, but hey, I, I think it's got a long way. And the fact that they're pushing so hard with the Android phones, sorry, Chachi, uh, is going to get a lot of people that pick up their Android phones because there's a lot of them out there these days. You can't really deny that. Uh, and I think that's going to be the big thing that's going to uh, uh, pick up Google Plus to get adopted quicker than, say, a Facebook. You know? I'm sorry. I stopped listening. <laughs> Oh, are you answering your Google Plus? Uh, I am. You are? No. No. <laughs> of course oh, not. Fantastic. Josh is waiting to be circled. No one uses Google I Plus. I circled you, man. I you're know. circled. You're in the group, I man. Know. I circled you too, buddy. Oh, That's all right. we had a circle moment. No, we didn't. There was no moment. I can't call it something else because <laughs> of mine. That's not, that's not safe for this show. Um... <laughs> was there any other news that happened in the last two weeks? Anybody get anything nice for Christmas? Chachi, did you play with the Kindle? I did play with the Kindle. It's nice. <laughs> no, I'm serious. It's, I mean, for what it is. Now, now uh, Chris, Chick Chris yeah. on, on Twitter got the, got the Kindle. Yeah, got and, the Kindle and, Fire. Yes. And, it, I mean, it's really nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know what you're looking for. Just general. I mean, it, it's it's a big Android phone. Now you've used you've used the uh, the iPad. You, yeah. You've used this. How does that compare? And how does it you compare? You can't compare the two. And it has it compared to to your experiences with other Android tablets. Yeah, with other Androids, this is the most fluid one. It works the best. Mm-hmm. Is it because it's not Android esque? Probably. You, you, you think- but I mean, 
uh, as far as the two go, you can't compare iPad to Kindle because you get what you pay for. Exactly. But, uh, and, 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 and the, the Kindle expectation Fire, can't be there, but it gets the job done, and that's what's important. If you want a tablet and you don't want to buy an iPad, mm -hmm. then the Kindle Fire is definitely the way to go. It's the true. It's the first true alternative. Right. I mean, between the usability of the device and it being connected to Amazon, mm -hmm. I mean, that's pretty much what you need. Exactly. So, um, yeah, I, I got to play with one in the, in the Best Buy, but... Even the guy at Best Buy was like, yeah, it doesn't really run that good because it's running our demo software and, uh, and and our Wi-Fi sucks here and everything. But then I heard another Best Buy guy uh, tell somebody that the Nook, the Nook Color or Nook Tablet and the Kindle Fire were basically the same thing. Wow. Yeah, uh, Chris has had it since Christmas, and she's read five and a half books so far on it. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow, that's awesome. So, that's awesome. So, what about you, Brian? Get anything good for Christmas? Um, oh, uh, it's not really technology related, but uh, I did get a, a nice duck hunting, uh, actual duck hunting game, which is actually really nice. It, it's very hard to explain, but uh, does it fire? Does it? Is it the one that fires the duck and you shoot it? Yes, I saw that at Macy's today. Oh, it is fantastic. <laughs> It was too windy the other day to actually use it. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, we were visiting my brother-in-law, and somebody in their cul-de-sac uh, got one, and we saw it. I was like, I have to have this. So my <laughs> lovely wife went onto her Android phone and said, buy it now. And it was here in three days. So... <laughs> <laughs> fantastic excellent excellent well on that note guys uh i think that's about it uh chachi yeah you got stuff i i always have stuff. you got stuff yeah um everything's back up and running well we're getting started we're, except we're, for the tumbler the tumbler isn't back up and running oh what's going on with the tumbler uh, it's just a matter of me posting stuff on the Tumblr. what was the tumbler again me giggle dot tumbler dot com so yeah. go check that out and of course you have the blog you'll be getting back up here Rolling with it after the holiday season, yeah. right? Yes. Is there any, what's on deck? Right. Are you going to put up the button tomorrow? I, the button's going to go up tomorrow, sir. I, 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 it, Is the button going to be the button's there gonna go, tomorrow? I, I'm probably going to work it tonight while stuff renders. Is the button going to be there tomorrow? Y yes. Yes. The 100%. Button. Sure. No, I can't. I don't need a shirt. I need a yes or no. <laughs> there will be a button, Chachi. All right, then people Chachi, need to know about it anyway. Then donations for Chachi said or for Chachi plays will be started tomorrow. Okay. Uh, the goal this year is three thousand mm -hmm. dollars. It's going to Toonzm and the Father Ryan Art Center mm -hmm. in McKee's Rocks to start or continue funding uh, art programs for underprivileged children. So it's going to be still for kids. Yeah, it's still for kids. Something different for art and right. tunes, and it's going to be where? Where is it taking place? It'll be at Toonzm. We get to hang out at the Toonzm yeah. for twenty four hours. Right. Yes, correct. Um, and Friday. Once I figure out how I'm going to do it, we're going to auction off uh, one of two slots. Okay. Um, instead of people, uh, the way it works is you donate money if you want to donate money. That's fantastic. Um, for $50 or more, you can actually reserve a slot to sit down and play video games with me um, for either a half hour or an hour, depending on how fast the slot fills up. And last year, we, we gave away certain slots, uh, one of which being the first slot and someone actually bought the last slot. Mm -hmm. So this year, we're auctioning off those slots. Mm -hmm. um, so you you either have an, an opportunity to bid uh, on playing me when I'm very well rested and ready <laughs> to go, or you can bid on playing when I'm at the end of my rope. Yes, and it will be streamed here on Sorgatron Media, and Always. maybe we'll do a Google Hangout. You can. <laughs> We're actually talking about uh, expanding to Xbox Live, um, but it all depends on the network capabilities at. Yeah, we have to explore uh, that. Yeah. with with uh, the streaming and everything. Exactly. So. Exactly. We'll have to see what that. Well, but we're going to be talking with them. We're going to get all that figured out here in the next few weeks. But that's that's the plan. So yes, tomorrow. There you go. As long tomorrow. as the yeah, no NASCAR. No NASCAR. <laughs> oh. New rule. No, no, no NASCAR. No NAS <laughs> Once we pass hour 12, there will be no NASCAR. <laughs> I can't buy the last slot and play NASCAR? 
I will fall asleep Only in a heartbeat. If it, isn't there isn't there a, a NASCAR demolition game out there or something uh, like probably. like NASCAR, NASCAR Street or something? The like last that? the last slot last year was a fighting game, so that uh, actually Soul, Soul Calibur, yeah, I believe. so that actually worked out well. And no games we need to install. Right. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> it is funny. I've been playing the footage, of course. You guys see it here. I think it was up here a little bit ago. Uh, but you actually act, you see you see the game screen just stop because it's the point where we took the 10 minutes to install Little Big Planet. No, um, I was still playing during that time. You were playing something else. Yeah. But, the, but I'm saying the video was on that screen. It was just like you guys yeah. sitting here in the screen and boom. So. But I mean, yeah, I... With the exception of bathroom breaks, because mm -hmm. it's medical ne medically necessary for me to go to the bathroom. Are we going to try to uh, get a hold of Guinness? No. Was it? Was it, I, I thought there was talking 63 about sixty-three hours. Sixty-three. Yes, that's the that's the world record for the longest maybe, time spent playing video maybe games. Maybe for Chachi plays three. No. <laughs> maybe Absolutely not. Just for fun. No. <laughs> no. That's nine hours short of seventy-two. I would die if I tried staying up for three days. <laughs> and, of course, you can see the video. We got a time lapse, a nice, uh, what was that, 13-minute time lapse of uh, all 24 hours yes. of last year's event. So if you want to go check that out, explicit lyrics <laughs> yeah, for the songs all, we put all, on there. Just all to there 24 the hours of it in 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We had some great people come out last we year. We did. For um, we had Freak Show. Sally Wigan came out to play Madden with me in the Freak Show. Mm -hmm. um, of course, Jenny Amoy, mm -hmm. uh, Scarehouse Bunny, which mm -hmm. was... Weird. Because that, <laughs> that was that was at that near endish part. Yeah, where yeah. I was that was like the point where you're starting to see stuff yeah, if yeah. you're playing with a bunny uh, <laughs> yeah. and raving rabbits. That was that was pretty good. So yeah, I mean, yeah. So ChachiPlays dot com. Please give us your money. <laughs> it's for a good cause. It is. It I'm is. not asking it you is. to fund my my side projects. This is for the kids. It's always for the kids. Buy a slot for your woman for Valentine's Day. That is a bad Valentine's Day. <laughs> it depends. If it's, she's a gamer. All right, Brian, what about you? Anything you want to plug your at Dab of Tech? T E K. No, we'll uh, just plug, uh, give the money to uh, Chachi Play so you can help the kids. Yeah. And uh, if you got extra money left over, remember, kids, the uh, Rim Playbook just went on sale. <laughs> it's right. Wasn't it three hundred dollars for every model? <laughs> I believe so. Yeah. Even the like, it doesn't matter how much space you have, it's three hundred dollars. And you know what's bad? It's still too still, expensive. I would still buy the Kindle Fire. Over yeah, their Playboy. Well, they yeah. Can, oh, they, cause, yeah, at least you can get email on the Kindle Fire, right? Right. Uh, we, there was a shout out from Bobby F. J. Town to the last game should be uh, Barbie Horse Adventure. No. So he's going for that slot. Absolutely not. There you go. I think it might be more exciting for you for NASCAR at that point. You might want to be a pretty princess. I, I want to give I a shout out. Be a pretty <laughs> I want to give a shout out to everybody that was in the chat room. Of course, hey, Brian, who jumped in here from yes, the chat room. Thank you. PGH Den, Miss Bodsy Pants, Joy Lord John, Bobby FJ Town, Chick Chris, and Samurai Modern. And, uh, oh, WrestleFan. And I got to look at the other thing. Hot Wheels and Riz were in there as well. Uh, thanks, everybody. Hey, this is, a, this is a great episode coming back. Great start to 2012. Hopefully, Rob will be with us next week. We're going to be playing a lot of fun stuff here on the Awesome Cast. Uh, this has been Awesome Cast 83. And you guys, hey, you can uh, hit us up like uh, so and many each have. Each week, we should just tell Rob that we're not doing a show and get someone to fi fill in for him. <laughs> <laughs> and be like, and make up an excuse for Rob the entire time. It's like the entire year, Rob. Rob is, cli <laughs> is climbing Everest right now. <laughs> Therefore, you got us. Hey, Rob. Hey, hey, why don't you tell people how to contact us, Trachi? You can get us at... Uh, Oh, it's on the screen. I was <laughs> I was trying to remember. Uh, contact at awesomecast.com or you can reach us on the hotline. It's 724-25-ACAST. That's 724-252-2278. And also on the Back Twitter. to you, Sorg. Back to me. And also, of course, uh, at awesomecast. <laughs> uh, we're on Facebook, uh, plus us, circle us, whatever that is on Google+. Plus. Uh, we have a lot of discussion over there these days. Uh, and that's it. Thank you. You guys have had a great chat room tonight. Awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience up there. Have an awesome week. And New Year. Okay.